Well, against my better judgment, I'm gonna try to record the process of me changing the starter on a 2005 Dodge Grand Caravan. This caravan has 131,536 on it. So hopefully, well not necessarily hopefully, but I imagine this is the original starter. We'll see. I got, you know, th this van just irritates the crap out of me. But the one thing I can say about this van, the one thing I can say about this van is that it did give us warning when the starter was gonna go out. It started doing it kind of intermittently. You could let it sit for a little while and then it would start back up. Unfortunately with this one, it doesn't seem like beating on the starter with a hammer does any good at all because it won't change, uh, you know, it deciding it's gonna start or not. First challenge is gonna see if we can push this thing from where it sits under the carport. I'm also gonna preface this by saying I've watched some videos of other people do this and some of them tend to struggle with I guess the topmost bolt on the starter and they end up removing the radiator fans and a couple other things from the front and hopefully I don't have to do that but if I do I'll, I'll show you guys of course. almost forgot I want to show you guys what it's doing when you do try to start it. I haven't tried it yet but I'm going to try it right now. Oh, I just got sprayed in the face. How did that even happen? I think I leaned and pushed the friggin' button. Oh my god. I got sprayed in the face by windshield washer stuff. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Alright, well I'm gonna I'm gonna make it make that noise anyway. It just kinda clicks. You probably can't tell. I had a witness too. I'm gonna have to go wash my face. Be right back. Okay, so I've got it up on jack stands. It's not very high because my jack is cheap and it doesn't go up very high. You give me enough room to get under here. First thing you got to do, of course, is you're going to disconnect the battery. And you know, before you even start disconnecting things under here, you don't want to touch live wires after all. So we're going under. We're laying over on the driver's side. This is the transmission pan, of course. I changed all that stuff earlier, but to give you a point of reference, there's the front motor mount, there's the oil filter, which is hanging straight down. It's the best design ever, by the way. So this is still the front of the front of the vehicle. Starters right here. It's this thing. This is one of the wires going to it. This is one of the connectors that you're gonna have to undo. And then of course this is going to reconnect to the new one. This is going to clip onto the new one. So the challenging part now is getting the, the darn bolts off. All right. Here's the new one, folks. Much cleaner. Looks pretty much the same, right? All right? So it looks like the bolts to take it off are actually pretty little. The first thing we're going to do is take off this nut for this wire and unclip this and then we'll go after this first uh, bolt excuse me for the lighting but I'm kind of pointing at it you can see right there it's just right there yes all right so I used a 13 millimeter wrench to take off the nut and washer to this big old positive cable down here and so it's loose as you can see it's no longer connected to the starter and the only other electrical thing that we're going to go after is that little clippy harness thing that I showed you guys a minute ago. See how we can get it to let go. I think I'm going to need a screwdriver. This little tiny stubby screwdriver. We'll push on this plastic tab. I tell you, having glasses and working under here is a blessing and an and a nightmare at the same time because the light reflects off of them but it also protects your eyes i think i can see better without my glasses though actually pull the tab slip off the harness maybe everything's moving so nicely like i just did it this is so far the easiest starter i have ever uh, started changing out. Honestly, guys, very simple. We'll just kind of move those things out of the way, and it gives us easy access to our first uh, bolt to start taking the starter off. And is 
still too slow? So all of this is probably going to get cut because all I want them to know about is what size it really is. Alright, let's try my eight again. So don't make the mistake I just made. So I'm under here trying to find the bolt that fits, or a, a socket that fits. And I'm looking at the starter from passenger side. And I was looking at this bolt here on the passenger side. Through my finger is. That's tiny. I'm looking at the wrong end. So you go driver's side. And driver's side here, where I'm pointing at, driver's side is where the bolt is to undo the starter. So I messed up. I've been kind of retardifying this. But again, where's my finger in the camera? That's the hardest part here is to <laughs> reference. <clears throat> but they're 15 millimeter bolts to remove the starter. So I have to go buy those. Uh, so I'll be back after I do that. All right, everybody. So I just got back from AutoZone. Um, this, I just needed one of those. So pretend I didn't get that. Got a 15 millimeter crescent wrench, a 15 millimeter deep socket for that top bolt, just because I've heard people say that they, that this is just helpful. And then I got a breaker bar in case uh, that top bolt's really sticky like uh, what I've heard it is. Well, so far the job has been really easy compared to what I thought it would be here with this other starter that I did on a Mercury Topaz about six months back or so. Um, but so far all of the bolts have came loose easy. The little electrical clips came off easy without breaking them. Usually I have a thing with electrical stuff where I like to break the plastic doodads on them. Uh, but this lower 15 millimeter bolt on the starter, this lower one, just broke loose really easy. So I don't think I'm going to need that breaker bar. But if I do, it might save my butt from having to take the rad fans off of this thing like a lot of others have done. Oh, I hear it. Removed. Lower starter bolt. Now time for the top one, which I can see from right here. It's got a negative, I think it's a negative uh, battery thing going to it. So yeah, there's, like not, there's not a lot of room. And it's also a bolt that sticks out a little bit from the nut, so that's why everybody's recommending a deep socket. I'm gonna see if I can get my wrench around it. And there's just some darkness. <laughs> it's hard to see. You wanna wipe it? I can't really get it. It's in a heck of a spot. I can grab the light though. I might be able to get it actually. I just went over the top of it right now. My wrench is hanging on it. I'm just going to see if I can find a way to turn it. So we're over it. Just having a hard time actually getting it over there. I have not had to remove any radiators or anything, radiator fans or anything like that. If you come down here and take a look, this bolt is the engine right there and then right underneath it right there where my flip off fingers nudging that's the other bolt so on it you need a 13 millimeter wrench and then you remove this off of it and then that little negative electrical lead comes off and then underneath that you've got the 15 millimeter so now I'm gonna stick my breaker bar down here with my 15 millimeter extension and go after this topmost bolt on the starter. And I'll let you guys know when I get this done. I'm on it kind of just a little difficult. It's slipping. 
So while editing this, I decided to throw in this little piece here that we, we didn't film the next little part because I was getting a little annoyed that I had to remove the radiator fans after all. And I knew that would add, you know, like an extra 15 minutes or so to the job. But I just wanted to say I struggled far too long in here trying to make my breaker bar and my 15 millimeter, you know, longer deep socket work. And it just, it wasn't going to work. You really do have to remove the radiator fans because there's not enough working space to to get the deep socket on it and to actually turn it and make it work to to get it off so just pull out the fans you know there's some screws and stuff on this plastic uh, that you got to take out and then i just removed the the metal brace that goes above the radiator i didn't take off the uh cable for the hood latch I just let it kind of hang there on the ground and um, that worked fine save you some time and then the radiator fans came up and out I didn't even have to remove the radiator hose I just kind of worked around it <laughs> and then once pulling the fans out there's so much room in front of that engine that it made it very easy so I got the wrench on there I removed that top bolt it wasn't very sticky for me at all uh, I think part of the reason why is because this isn't the first time the starter's been changed because it had a it had a Napa starter on it unless they came that way from the factory. I think somebody did this job before. So I just wanted to uh, to stick that part in here before you watch the next part. Also, I just wanted to say when I do connect the battery, I don't connect it super tight because I was trying to save time and just see if the starter was going to work because of all the uh, the hassles we went through. Um, so I didn't tighten it all the way. So the actual first attempt to start it didn't work because the battery uh, terminal cable things just weren't on tight enough. So then I went and tightened them up and then it, it started right up. You'll see. Your lab, sir. Cool. All right, so we got everything back together again. It turned out I did have to take this whole thing apart in order to wrench that top bolt off. So it was a lot of work. But the point that we're at now is we got the starter all the way back in. Uh, it's so much easier without the rad fans in it. Uh, so now we got everything back together again. Really eager to see if uh, if it starts. There we go. Battery just died. Just went quick. Everything shut off. Too eager, you were perhaps. Yeah, this thing just sparked up a little, so yeah. I don't think it was connected all the way. I didn't tighten these up all the way for the sake of just seeing if it'll start. All right, I will try it again. Yep, lights are back on. Woo. They were off, and then I clicked it. Woo. It's all fixed, and it's a lot of work. Don't let anybody fool you. It's time consuming but it's actually easy. So there we go, 2005 Dodge Grand Caravan starter replacement.